after weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the loose. After little evidence has been found, a young girl states that she survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells her story. I woke up because I had a bad dream. I saw the window was open, but I know it was closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it. Then I crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and I saw a pair of eyes. And they weren't normal eyes, no. They were dark demon eyes. They just plain out terrified me. Then I saw his mouth. A long, sticky smile that really, really scared me even more. The guy stood there watching me, and after like forever, he said it. He said, go to sleep, all crazy, and I screamed, and he had a knife, and he jumped on top of my bed, and I kicked, and I punched, and I rolled around, and I wanted him off, and, and that's when Daddy broke the door. The man threw the knife, and it hit Daddy's shoulder. I was so scared Daddy would die. And the police came. The man went out of the room and down the hallway. Then I heard a big crash. I came out of my room. I saw the window was broke. I looked out and he disappeared. But I keep having bad dreams about that face and those eyes and smile. Police are still on the lookout for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in this story, please contact your local police department. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother Lou couldn't complain though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and my son. She turned around and called her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband Peter and my two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and his family were done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk. But I don't even know that- but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Ugh, forget it. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there, looking at his ceiling, when suddenly, he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, and he walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there, eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time, it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain 
but he once again dismissed it. As he and Liu finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The kid seemed to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He wore an Aeropostale shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, well, well. It looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here and all, I'll go ahead and make introductions. Over there's Keith. Jeff and Lou looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about obese. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And most importantly, I am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small fare to ride the bus. If you catch my drift. Lou stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you would have been more cooperative, but I guess we gotta do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Lou and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Lou gestured to him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet, or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. What? And what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, screaming. Troy rushed him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach, and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Lou could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how did you... That was all Lou said. They saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Lou made it to school... They didn't dare tell what happened. They just sat and listened. Lou just thought of the events as his brother beating up a few kids. But Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home due to the whole thing near the bus stop and how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore, he felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was and he replied in a somewhat ominous voice. It was a wonderful day. The next morning, Jeff heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door, and his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, 
These officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting, and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Lou. Son, we found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say that he and Lou had been attacked, but there was no proof it was not them who attacked first. He couldn't say that they weren't fleeing because, truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was him who beat up all the kids. Sir, it... it was me. I, I, I was the one who beat up the kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner, and they both nodded. Well, kid, looks like you're in juvie. Wait! They all looked up to see Lou holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks, and I have the marks to prove it. Lou lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down. Lou held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lou! It, it was me! I, I did it! <laughs> Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh. Poor bro. Trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lou out to the patrol car. Lou! Tell them it was me! Tell them! I was the one who beat up those kids! Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please. You don't have to lie. We know it was Lou. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the car sped off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, saw Jeff's face, and knew something was wrong. Son. Son. What is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that both his parents were shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no word from Lou at the juvenile detention center. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That was until Saturday, when Jeff's mother woke him. She wore her usual happy, sunshiny smile. Jeff, today's the day. Jeff's mother opened up the curtains and let the light flood into his room. Ah, uh, what? What's today? Jeff stirred awake. Why, it's Billy's party. Jeff was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now, get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get herself ready. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up his mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He wondered why they would ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party. Son, is that all you're going to wear? Better than wearing too much. Jeff's mother had resisted the urge to yell at him and concealed her feelings with a smile. Now, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression. Jeff grunted and went back up to his room. A minute later, he yelled down the stairs. I don't have any fancy clothes. Just pick out something. Jeff 
looked around in his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it, though. He looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts. None of them went with dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on and went downstairs. You're wearing that? Jeff's mother looked at her watch. Ugh. No time to change. Let's just go. Jeff's mother herded him and his father out the door. They crossed the street and made their way to Barbara and Billy's house. Once there, they knocked on the door. In a moment, Barbara appeared. Just like Jeff's parents, she too was overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults. No kids. The kids are out in the yard, Jeff. How about you go and meet some of them? Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well have been standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, wanna play? Uh, no kid, I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked at Jeff with a weird puppy dog face. Please? Ugh, fine. Jeff put on the hat and started to pretend shoot at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then he started to actually have fun. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of Lou. So he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise. A weird, rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on their skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw Randy's bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you, and you got my brother sent to juvie. Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, oh, no, 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 Jeff. I don't go for even, Jeff. I go for winning, Jeff. You may have kicked our asses that one time, little boy, but that's not going to happen today. As Randy spoke, he rushed at Jeff. Ah! They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Ah! Jeff pushed Randy off of him and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. No one interrupts or guts will fly. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabbed his foot and twisted it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked to the back door. Troy grabbed him. <sighs> Need some help? Troy picked Jeff up by the back of the collar and threw him through the patio door. As Jeff tried to stand, he was kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly kicked Jeff over and over until Jeff was coughing up blood. Come on, Jeff! Fight me! Randy picked Jeff up and threw him into the kitchen. Randy saw a bottle of vodka on the counter. He grabbed it and smashed the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! Randy threw Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff! Look at me! Jeff glanced up, blood streaming down his face. I was the one who got your brother sent to juvie. And now you're just gonna sit there and let him rot for a whole year? <laughs> you're worse than I am. You should be ashamed. Jeff started to get up. Oh, finally! He stood up to fight! Jeff was on his feet then, blood and vodka dripping from his face. Once again, he got a strange feeling. The one he hadn't felt for a while. Yes! Finally! He's up! Randy ran at Jeff. And that's when it happened. Something inside Jeff snapped. His psyche was destroyed. All rational thinking was gone. All he could do was kill. Jeff grabbed Randy and pile drove him into the ground. 
climbed on top of him and punched him straight in the heart. The punch was so vicious that it caused an arrhythmia. In seconds, Randy's heart stopped. Randy gasped, trying to catch his breath, but Jeff never let up, hammering punches into Randy's face and chest. Blood gushed, and in moments, Randy's body gave out, and he took one final breath, and then died. In the silence that followed the brutal beating, Jeff finally noticed that everyone was looking at him. Everyone. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith, with their guns pointed at him. Jeff, seeing the guns trained on him, ran for the stairs. As he ran, Troy and Keith fired at him, but none of the bullets connected. Jeff ran up the stairs, he heard Troy and Keith following behind him in close pursuit. As Troy and Keith let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducked into the bathroom. He grabbed the towel rack and ripped it off the wall. Moments later, Troy and Keith raced into the room, knives at the ready. Troy, spotting Jeff, swung his knife at him, but Jeff backed away and then retaliated, smashing the towel rack into Troy's face. Troy went down hard, out cold in a heap upon the floor. Only Keith remained standing. Unfortunately for Jeff, Keith was more agile than Troy, and when Jeff went to strike with the towel rack, Keith dodged the assault, dropped the knife, and grabbed Jeff by the throat. Keith then pushed Jeff into the wall, upsetting a container of bleach which sat on the shelf above them. The container fell and burst on contact with Jeff and Keith, drenching them in its corrosive contents. In a moment, both of them were burned and screaming in pain. Jeff, however, was not about to let a little bleach become the end of him. He wiped his eyes as best he could, then pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight into Keith's head, landing one well-placed blow to the bully's temple. As Keith lay on the bathroom tile, bleeding out from the wound on his head, an ominous smile flashed across his face. <sighs> What's so funny? Without a word, Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. <sighs> What's funny is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. <laughs> Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol in the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach worked on his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll to put out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had turned him into a walking inferno. He ran down the hall to the stairs. Once there, he collapsed tumbling down the steps and landing in a pile at the foot of a crowd of people that had formed in the lower level of the house. People screamed as they saw Jeff's condition. Jeff was nearly dead, barely conscious at the base of the stairs, and appeared to be horribly injured. The last thing that Jeff saw before blacking out was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flames, trying to extinguish him. Darkness took him. When Jeff awoke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see a thing, but he felt another cast, this one on his shoulder, and he felt stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up and realized there was some sort of tube in his arm. When he got up, it fell out and a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet. The nurse put Jeff back in his bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there without the benefit of his vision, with no idea what his surroundings were. 
Finally, after several hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? Jeff couldn't answer. His face was covered and he was unable to speak. Oh honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you, they decided to let Lou go. The news inspired Jeff to bolt up, but he stopped himself halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be together again. Jeff's mother gave him a hug and said her goodbyes. During the next couple of weeks, Jeff was visited many times by his family, but eventually there came the day when his bandages were to be removed. Jeff's family was all there to see it, to see what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited in anticipation until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was nearly removed. Now we'll hope for the best. The doctor quickly pulled the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. <coughs> Jeff's mother screamed at the sight of his face. Lou and Jeff's dad stared awestruck at Jeff's face. What? <laughs> what happened to my face? Jeff rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of the distress. His face. It was horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face had turned to pure white, and his hair had been singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family, and then back at the mirror. Jeff, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. It's perfect. <laughs> Jeff's family was stunned by his remarks. Jeff laughed uncontrollably. His parents noticed that their son's left eye was twitching. So was his left hand. Uh, Jeff? Are, are you... are you okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> I've never felt more happy. <laughs> this... This face goes perfectly with me. <laughs> Jeff couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. As it turned out, while Jeff was fighting Randy, he literally went insane. Something had snapped inside of him, changing him in an instant. What remained of Jeff was now a crazy killing machine. His parents, of course, had no idea. Doctor, is my son all right? You know, in the head? Oh, yes. This behavior is typical for patients that have taken very large amounts of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here, and we'll reevaluate him psychologically. Ugh. <sighs> Thank you, Doctor. Jeff's mother went over to her son. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Jeff looked away from the mirror, his face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, okay, mommy. <laughs> Jeff's mother put a hand on his shoulder and led him to the reception desk where a duffel bag was waiting for them. This is what came in. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son had worn the night of the incident. But now they were clean of blood and stitched together. She led Jeff to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, never suspecting the change in Jeff. Or what was to come. 
Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? <laughs> I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now, now I can smile forever. <laughs> Jeff's mother noticed her son's eyes, ringed strangely in black. Then she gasped in horror as she realized what he had done. Jeff, your eyes. Jeff's eyes never blinked, never closed. His eyelids were gone. I couldn't see my face. I got tired, and my eyes started to close. So I, I burned out my eyelids, so I could see myself forever. <laughs> Jeff's mother slowly started to back away. She had finally realized that her son had gone insane. Jeff, noticing the change in her expression, approached her. <gasps> What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, yes, son. Yes, you are. Let me go get Daddy so he can see your face. She ran into her bedroom and shook Jeff's dad from his slumber. Honey, get the gun. We... She stomped. Jeff stood in the doorway, holding a knife. Mommy... You lied. Jeff rushed across the room with the knife, laughing all the while, and then stabbed and gutted both his parents. <laughs> Meanwhile, his brother Lou woke up, startled by a sudden commotion. He sat alert for a moment, but when he didn't hear anything else after several minutes, he shrugged, shut his eyes, and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. Just as Lou looked up, a wet, sticky hand covered his mouth stifling a scream as Lou watched in horror Jeff emerged from the darkness gripping a knife in his blood soaked hands Lou thrashed wildly trying to escape Jeff's grip Jeff raised the knife <gasps> Just 